Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Kingsville Hampton in Court. I'm Mark Molina alongside Ferris Sabawi. Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, we got a really exciting game for you guys here. Uh, we just came off that, that girls game that just happened, and uh, now we got the men's Texas A&M Kingsville uh, Havelina basketball team taking on the Incarnate Word Cardinals, uh, part of our doubleheader here today at Pack the House Night in Kingsville. Yeah, definitely an exciting night here for Havelina basketball, and the Havelina is a big game here against Incarnate. University of Incarnate Word and uh, doing uh, really well. The Javelinas have been uh, lately a another big game here in, within the Lone Star Conference for the Hogs. Tell us a little bit more about what we can expect here tonight first uh, from the boys. Well, you know, uh, I've been I've been following uh, the men's team for, for quite a while now and uh, definitely uh, Rashad Bassey is so far their only player averaging in double figures, but that, uh, that stat kind of leaves you fooled there. Um, they're definitely uh, one of the uh, a really good team on the offense, uh, and they've been managing closeout games late. Um, and that's that's a really good quality that that a team needs to have, especially if you want to try to stay close in this really competitive conference. Yeah, you mentioned the competitive conference. Uh, Havelina is uh, just two games out of first place at five and three in the LSC Midwestern State, seven and one, Incarnate Word, six and two. So the Havelinas can very well move into end of that second place uh, running there. Yeah, this is going to be a very competitive game. Uh, actually, Coach Pete had said uh, after the last game that was played here that he was really excited that, uh, you know, he knew a lot of players were going to come out because it was packed the house night. And he was really excited about that because uh, he said this is definitely one of their bigger rivalry matches. And this is a, a match that Kingsville does not want to give up. Um, and that, you know, and they don't think they have to either. Um, you do got to watch out for some Cardinal players, though, as uh, Andre Corley has had his hot streak lately. Uh, he's been averaging 15.2 uh, points per game, um, not to mention shooting 59.6% from the field. Yeah, and, uh, and the Havelinas uh, getting a nice little stretch here. They get to play Cardinal Word again, then they get to take on two teams that are ahead of them in uh, Cameron and Midwestern State, and then Charlton State, who's always a... It was always a tough outing. It was a force last year in the, the LSC, but you know, any one of those teams can make some noise on any given night here in the conference. So it's going to be something to watch out for here. And the BYW, you know, uh, having a lot of options to go to on the offense, that gets countered by actually the Havelinas defense. They have the best defense in the Lone Star Conference. They force teams to shooting just 37.4%. And defense like that, it's definitely a reason that they're up as high as they are uh, on the LSC ranking. And the Havelinas winner of four of their last five here as they take the court right now, uh, coming off uh, coming off wins over Abilene Christian on January 29th, falling to Angelo stay back on the 16th, but one of the three previous games against West Texas, Eastern New Mexico, and a and Commerce. So the Havelinas in pretty good shape here, right where they want to be, uh, about 500, uh, eight games into the Lone Star Conference season. So uh, Coach Pete, uh, maybe I ain't returned to the, to the NCAA uh, Division II basketball tournament. So if, uh, the Havelinas certainly are gonna have a resume and a hat in that, in that ring there. Well, you see, uh, with this semester came the additions of uh, Dytrell Bracey and Adonis Bailey. Um, and those additions to the team have made the Havelinas so much better just because it, it uh, would, those players both being very athletic and just very good shooters leaves a lot of other players like Jamal Brown and Rashad Bassey open to do more damage than uh, they were able to do last semester. Yeah, Rashad Bassey right now averaging 14.9 to lead the Havelinas in scoring uh, followed behind by Jamal Brown who averages just under 10 at 9.7. And we're going to have a national anthem right now, so we're going to do our thing and rise. You know?
definitely a, a, a coach that will go down and have another visit. Yeah, a couple of uh, NCAA tournament appearances, most recently in 2009. This is the first round there. Now, a, lot of, a lot of good players out of the and he's really good for us last season. Uh, Cavalino is really well coached and uh, lucky to have coach Pete here at Harvard. Uh, and I'm sure he's glad to have a squad uh, as athletic and, and as versatile as uh, his team is. Uh, I'm really excited to see a, a team there. You know, there's a struggle. There's a lot of real locker room problems. I haven't seen a lot of that too much this year out of them. I remember co last couple of years had some problems there. That's another wonderful rendition of the, our national anthem. Oh, Can we get ready here with the starting lineups here in a few seconds? Yeah, so far the lineups have been named. Uh, but we're just waiting for them to be named officially on the court. All right, UIW about to take the court here. They're starting lineup. Uh, Lindale Brown, Kyle Hiddle, Dion. Dion L. Rucker and Andre Corley, and then rounding it out is Anthony Horton for uh, the University of Incarnate Word, who stands right now at six and two, ten to six overall, number two in the Lone Star Conference. Remember yeah, and, uh, I had I had asked Coach Pete uh, how you know how excited he was to uh, really find the Havelinas testing themselves uh, at this point in the season against such a good team, and uh, he was really excited for the showdown. He knows what his hogs are capable of. He's really hoping they come out and prove it tonight. Yeah, so maybe they could send themselves to the LSU tournament with a, a much higher speed than they did a year ago and trying to rebound here. We'll go ahead and uh, let's run down to Havelina's uh, starting five right now. Scott Basie, Dwight Taylor, Jonas Bailey, Adam Muzma, and Reed Wallace. And one of those Wallace boys who has been here in Hog Nation for the last couple of years with him and his brother, uh, brother Ryan, who graduated a couple of years ago, also a really good shooting big man for the Havelinas in his time here. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things Coach Pete said coming off uh, last week's game was that he actually was wanting to go to Reed Wallace a little bit more. Um, you know, uh, he said that Reed's been knocking down his shots, and, and you know, uh, at, at Reed's height, he has the height to uh, take the ball into the post if he wants to, but he can also shoot it from the perimeter, and, and Coach Pete has noticed that. He's saying uh, he's hoping that they can drop a few more plays to try to get uh, Reed Wallace to get a few more touches on the ball and maybe get a few more opportunities. We'll see if uh, that happens this game. Hey, you know, and he can, he can shoot the ball, and he can, uh, he can shoot it during the game, and he can shoot it late. Because a couple of times in his career and knocked down some big shots. Yeah, so. he's definitely been one of the more clutch players for the Havelinas. Uh, 
their game last week against ACU. Uh, Half Moon has had a big lead, almost dropped it until Reed Wallace sealed the game with a, with a three that kind of uh, ended ACU's hopes of winning. And uh, he's definitely a, a, a big shot player that way, and you definitely got to watch out for him because if, if Coach Pete can find a way to uh, utilize him perfectly, then UIW is going to have a problem. Uh, stop here, so. Mugmar is going to be jumping against Rucker here to start things off. <coughs> of course, Havilene is in white and kind of weird and wearing black with the red letters. Opening tip is going to be controlled by Taylor. Oh, excuse me. Mugmar had won the tip there, and Taylor got it, gave it up to Bassey. Start this possession. See the Havilene can get off on the right foot here. Ball moving by the Hogs. How many of have always been pretty patient moving the ball? There's Bailey from the corner, knocks him down. Quick 3 0 uh, lead for the Javelinas. Last game against uh, Abilene Christian, Adonis Bailey and Rashad Bassey both went 2 of 2 from the three point line quickly. We'll see if uh, the Javelinas get off to a hot start uh, here. Avelina is playing really good defense. Forcing the extra pass to UIW. There's a shot there by Horton over Mugma. One of the reasons uh, the Havelina's defense has been so good is because they usually do close down the lanes and it's very really hard to penetrate on this uh, Havelina team, usually forcing teams on the perimeter. Nice pass inside to Mugma who is there, but the tip in is going to go to Basie. The shot Basie, early two pointer there on the tip in. Yeah, Grimaud couldn't finish there, but great hustle by Bassey not giving up on the play, even though it looked like it was on its way down. 5 2 lead here by the Javelinas. And in the paint is Corley, and Corley is going to get the score on the drive. 5 4. Yeah, Corley is a bona fide scorer for the Cardinals. Uh, able to find the room to run in there. Javelinas got to watch out for him. And all the way to perimeter. It's Bailey, and Bailey knocks down another, uh, knocks down a three, so Bailey gets another three point. That's going to be a second here on the early going. 8-4 lead. Yeah, Bailey uh, is actually a player from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, definitely a great city for basketball. Yeah, you know, a rich tradition there. You know, one of the cities. Rob ball it up in the park. And it looks like Bailey brings that mentality to the Havelinas, which is uh, much needed. Bassey almost got his hands on it. Corner three by Horton. Horton is going to miss, and the rebound is going to be corralled by Wallace. Havelina is looking to add to an early lead here. Up eight to four, playing well. Yeah, Havelinas have been doing a good job lately starting their games as well as closing them out. It's uh, usually the in-between they need to focus on. So we'll see if they can keep this uh, offensive production going. Fun fake there by uh, Wallace off for the easier two and missed that one. Coming back the other way, high off the glass, was Dale Brown, and he misses. Havelina's coming back the other way. Doing a really good job as they get to the rim. Bassey, strong drive to the rim, loses the ball. Horton comes up with it. Yeah, Wallace couldn't keep his grip there, and it ended up uh, leading to a turnover for the Havelinas. It's like a cat. Kyle Hiddle driving, looks like the ball was poked out of bounds by Havelina. Going to go over to Incarnate Warriors, the inbound. That last shot that Reed Wallace took also was, was a pretty good look. Uh, we'll see if he can knock a few more of those down. Kind of look you want to give him, you're looking to get him more involved in the offense. Shot they're going to live with as Rucker, able to shoot over Taylor. Misses that one. This will be a... Looks like the ref was not happy. The fact that there was uh, like maybe a prop on the court. I don't know. No, they're uh, they get really angry. That's their court. They police it, and then nobody, no mess in their court. They do a good job doing so. And we'll get into the referees here a little, in a little while. I have some bios on them. I'm joking. <laughs> 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 so 
Lavalina see a 16-22 to go, 8-4 lead. Trying to add to it, Mugma down inside. Nice little finesse shot there, unable to follow through with it, but Havelina gets the rebound. Mugma is such a strong post player for the Havelinas. Uh, always managing to post up, always managing to find room to take a shot. Uh, just couldn't put it down there, but definitely look for him to keep being utilized as well throughout the game. He's one of those hardworking post players, and you got to love guys like him. There's a shot there by Bailey, and Bailey knocks it down, and Havelina's starting off pretty good here. 10 to 4 here in the early going. You know, uh, that shot might have not been the best shot selection, but when you're a player like Adonis Bailey, you got two for two going. Sometimes you got to give yourself the heat check. He found out he's still hot. Hittle. From beyond the arc, misses, but they're going to call. They're going to call the foul on the loose ball on Mugma. If the Havelinas have had any trouble uh, throughout the season, it's, it's only been four foul trouble. Uh, the last game that the Havelinas dropped against Angelo State, Rashad Bassey was limited just 12 minutes because of foul trouble. And uh, the problems that happened against ACU, the Havelinas were losing their big lead was partly because of uh, the foul trouble they'll find themselves in. So McMah picking up one quick here for the Havelinas. Yeah, but the Havelinas uh, starting off really good. Four of eight from the field here. Two for two from downtown, a big reason they have the lead here. So nice early momentum uh, going to Havelinas way. You're gonna have to thank Adonis Bailey for that. Three of three. Not to mention, two of two from behind the arc. He's got eight points already. We've only been five minutes in to this half. Yeah, so all Bailey, all day. As we suspected, we got a, almost a full crowd here at Pakistan tonight. A lot of people are filing in to Kingsville of Hampton Inn Court. Got a lot of the Greeks out here and a lot of People with funny jackets, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few uh, player, uh, a few fans in the stands actually painted their face. You gotta, you gotta love, you gotta love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big fans here at the Kingsville Hampton Court always good to see. As plays, just about to resume again. Mounting the ball, number two, from Dale Brown. The foul, Rucker's trying to drive in there, and it looks like they're gonna... Yeah, foul that seemed kind of uh, a little unnecessary. A little touch foul, but... It's gonna be the first on Dwight Taylor. Second team foul on the Havelinas. And Havelinas is really sticking to the to the men defensively. Turnaround jumper there by Horton, unable to connect. And you know, then, and that's the shot that Havelina is uh, definitely going to live with here. A turnaround jumper like that, where Horton didn't get enough room to even look at the rim. Um, Havelina's defense uh, definitely deserves the credit for, the, for that uh, possession there. Havelina is going to set up 17 seconds on the shot clock. Bassey drives, puts it up and in. Good drive there by Bassey. Great hesitation move by him. It looked like he was going to give the ball up to Damon Warren there to do work, but ended up laying it in instead. Havelina's come away with the steal here. Hiddle gets it taken away from him on the other side on the drive, and Havelina's gonna regroup. Trying to stretch this lead to double digits here early on, 12 to four. Oz thought about it, put it on the floor. Tries to put it up. Damon Warren almost had the rebound there, but. Yeah, can't finish there, but it looks like they're gonna call a foul on the Cardinals. They're going to call it on 33, and that's going to be on Anthony Horton. So, and Wallace is going to check out of the game. Marshall Bonds, uh, third, coming off the bench here for the Javelinas. Yeah, something uh, something you need to know about Coach P is uh, he always likes to rotate his players very constantly, always keeps their legs fresh, always keeping new players in, taking new players out. Uh, his coaching style is, is, is a lot like playing chess. Lots of strategy in it. You know, no, Coach P seems like a man of strategy. And really wise man once you talk to him in person. 
Really couldn't imagine him teaching another way, coaching another way. As it comes into under 14 minutes left here in the first half, Avalina's lead 12 4. Great strip by Dwight Taylor. Yeah, Livingston just lost it. Nobody to beat. It's gonna oh! Be Dwight Taylor throwing it down. Dwight Taylor with the two handed jam. Havelina's up 10 now, 14 to 4. <coughs> and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty alive over there on the Havelina bench. Livingston shoots and misses. Rebound is there. Bassey coming back the other way. Looking for the trailer, and Bonds is doing the same. We're going to throw it back out. Bassey gets in the lane, goes up. Livingston got a piece of it, it looked like. Going to come back the other way. Yeah, Havlina's going to score on that trip down, but notice how Bassey always loves to drive the ball down even when he doesn't have the numbers. He's a player you can trust doing that, though, because his ball handling is so good. Yeah, very careful with the ball there as he entered the paint. Able to get it out to, to Bonds there. And with the Havlina's, like you said, coming out 14-4 as Kittle misses the first like it's two free throws. So Jamal Brown and Dietro Bracey coming out for the Havelinas. Basti and Bailey going to have a seat and, and Hiddle misses them both. So Havelinas, they're going to maintain the 10 point cushion here. Bonds long two, puts it in. Marcel Bonds third. Uh, Bonds is such a long, lanky player. And, uh, he can definitely hit that mid-range. He's uh, one of uh, the most efficient players off the Havelina bench. Um, and you know, the bench is a huge reason the Havelinas have been doing as, uh, as, good as, as good as they've been this season. Yeah. B Bonds is a really good player. Uh, proved la came, on, came on at the end of last year and he's been you know, a key uh, role player in the Coach Chief system. I wish he's coming here to the school, but, you know, a potential um, block party waiting to happen. We've seen him do it before. Yeah, Havelina is, uh, like I said, with the addition of Bailey and Bracey, just so much more athletic as a team. And that's the thing is, uh, when you are more athletic, you can get more blocks. You can, uh, you know, uh, get a few more dunks in instead, able to make that athletic play. So 12 and a half to go here. Havelina's leading 16 to 4. University of Carnot Words trying to cut into that lead here. Drive by Corley. Oh, and he gets the tough. friendly bounce there. Good. Tough lane by Corley, but he's a bona fide scorer. He's going to find a way to put that ball through the hoop somehow, so give him credit there. 16 to 6. Driving hard is Bracey. They're going to call an offensive foul on him. I'm not sure. Not too sure what the call was there. Yeah, looks, looks to be a diff, a little ticky tack there. It'll be the 14th foul on the Avalinas. Oh, and great active hands. Avalinas coming up with a steal. Down the court into Herbie, or the Avalinas going to get set up here. Oh, Brown's pass, the uh, deflected by Brown. Put out of bounds. Try to get it to Betcho Bracey over there on the other side of the court. Yeah, lots of screens being done by the Havelinas off the ball. Try to get some players open so they could take a, a better jump shot. It looked like Lindale Brown, though, had uh, found, had found the Havelinas out, deflected that pass there, put it out of bounds. Yeah, so timeout on the floor. 11.28 left to go here in the first half. Havelina is... Uh, Really sharp out of the gate, 16 to six here. And, and uh, they've got the 10 point lead. Good for them, always, always important to have a good start. And uh, a lot of the offensive production coming from Adonis Bailey, shooting three or three, he's got eight points on the night. Uh, just being trailed by the only other scorer so far for the Havelinas.
excuse me, they, the Shy Basie also has a two points for the Havelinas right now. So a couple of guys to, to watch out for. Boy, Taylor also had that big dunk. Can get back on the court now. Brown, Warren, Bonds the third, Basie, and Bracey on the court for the Havalinas right now as they miss the 10-point lead. Brown in the lane, puts it up and over, and Brown tried to get the put back and tried to throw it down. But that shot would have actually went down if Warren hadn't touched it, but Warren was just a little too excited there. Yeah, I just wanted to throw it down the cylinder, but not really going to happen like that way, so... Going to go over the other way to Incarnate Word here. Driving hard, Corley makes, puts it up, up and in. Good job there by Corley getting into the paint once it, again. Good move by him. He had a sort of uh, Hakeem Olajuwon dream shake there. Jamie Warren going to get called there for a foul. Yeah, Damon Warren really forked it on that play. Yeah, so. Havelina's a cold hand the last couple of minutes. Uh, got off that big lead, but haven't put it down here in the last couple of possessions up the floor. It's still trying to keep this incarnate word attack at bay. A team that can score if they want. Brown can't quite move. finish there. Yeah, Lindale Brown almost finished it. Just couldn't, couldn't manage to get it through the hoop. Risky pass by McMahon. Yeah, Bracey able to corral it there before it heads out of bounds. So he's just going to reset with it. See what they can get. McMahon calling for it downstairs. Bracey for three, way short. Bond tries to crowd it on the floor and there's a scuffle for it. Looks like the Havelinas have called a timeout there. They're gonna get it. I already take that timeout with this thing. So Havelina so far uh, having the advantage on the offense, shooting seven of 16. It's uh, almost 44%, while uh, UIW is just 4 of 12 right now at 33%. Yeah, but keeping it interesting here, um, oh, played, sure. playing really well defensively uh, after the slow start. Yeah, Cardinals only down 8, and uh, don't forget, you know, like I said, they are a huge threat, especially on the offensive end. We've got a lot of players who can score the ball. So Havelin is uh, so far doing a good job with their defense. We'll see if they can keep it up. Bracey going to inbound here for the Havelinas. Gets in the bonds, decides to put it on the floor. Nothing there. As we come up with just under 10 minutes at 9.40 to go here in the first half. Havelinas up 16 to 8. Basie tries to just it off to Mugma, but he wasn't able to corral that pass. Not sure what the call is there, but it looks like it's going to be an offensive foul. Yeah, I don't really agree with that one. Might have been a, actually offensive three in the key. Jamal Brown had a good look at the three-pointer. He should have taken it. He's, uh, he's usually been knocking him down from there. Havelinas have been uh, pretty hot this season from the three-pointer line. Yeah, a couple of hesitation um, opportunities there. Not taken by the Hogs. Nice timing on the shot by Horton, but unable to put it down. Havelina's coming back down with it. Yeah, Horton with a great hesitation play there. Made him get a really easy look at the basket. Just couldn't score. So Brown. And there's going to be a foul on the Havelina side. They're going to call it on Macy. That's going to be his first. 
cast his first foul. Uh, Havelinas must be a little bit frustrated right now. Uh, haven't even been able to get a shot off just a couple of consecutive turnovers here. That's their fourth. Yeah, Havelinas five fouls here in the early going. Livingston puts it up and in. Finally getting one to go. Yeah, that was a good floater by Livingston there. Incarnate Word is chipping away at the early lead. 16 to 10 here, 8.35 to go. Yeah, this is the point where the Havelinas need to dig a little deep and, and uh, find some more momentum here. Hug Mom, good move, turn around with the turn around hook. Misses, but they're gonna call a foul. Good finesse move there. Mugma at the line. Yeah, so far he's just a 67% free throw shooter this season. You know, for a big guy, not that bad. Uh, Eating my words here. As, you as really the air should balls, eat them. As, he really, as the air balls the first one. <laughs> what a terrible shot that was, though. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, but you know, Havelina still have a lead, have a lot to look forward to. Magma even has a second free throw to redeem himself, so hopefully he'll make the best of the opportunity. Magma going to set up the second shot. Misses them both. So two missed free throws there by Mugma. It's gonna leave the Havelina stuck at 16 points. They've been there for a few minutes now. Yeah, it's been a little it's been a little while. Oh, nice uh, pass there by Kisumbri by Livingston. Livingston just Yeah, but Livingston looks hurt. That's Sumbri. Oh, looks like he came down wrong awkwardly, but good pass there by Livingston to get it to him. See if Mugma can uh, try to get past the hobble defender. Oh, good move by McMahon. Yeah. Hobbled or not, I think he was going to get that shot off either way. Did get the shot off, but couldn't score, so he's going to have two free throws here. Right after this timeout, leaving 7.52 left in the first half. Havelin has had a hot, hot start, leading 16 to 6. But ever since then, uh, the Cardinals have been able to chip away at it, so it's 16 12 right now. This is, uh, Coach Pete looks at this game as a must win for the Havelinas, uh, especially because uh, Kingsville and UIW are just put just a game under each other here in the rankings for the LSC. Yeah, no, you know, it's really, it's getting really tight up there at the, at the top of the Lone Star Conference. It's always a really, really competitive conference, but Havelinas in the mix in the top four. A little yeah. bit changed the direction in the last couple of years, you know. Um, Really banging it out there in the, in, you know, in the final four yeah. of those eight. But, you know, the Havelinas right now are one of the premier teams in the LSC. And, you know, a big reason is that uh, Coach Pete in this lineup, uh, one of what I like to call them Coach Pete teams. You know, it, admittingly, uh, some years he just has teams, you know, design his type of teams. But this looks to be uh, one of those years where he has a Coach Pete type team. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, nobody looked at Kingsville being this good, uh, especially at this point in the season. Uh, they had been slated to come in sick. Uh, that's what the LSC polls had determined. And so, so far, Kingsville managing to stay in the conversation and stay pretty significant here with their field goal defense. Yeah, so McMahon uh, at the line and once again. Uh, it's only a four-point game after the Havilene is led at one time by 10. Kevin McMahon so far 0 of 2 from the charity stripe. We'll see if he can improve them here as he knocks down the first one. Puts his team up by 5. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. <laughs> Tried to extend the lead here to 6 on this one. Shot is up. Shot is good. And knocks him down both. So. Redeemed himself from the charity stripe there. He's going to take a Trip to the bench as Mike Evans checks on. Inside of eight minutes to go, Havelina six point lead. 
Pass looked good by Mitchell, but by the Eel. Try to get a good side, but looks like Reed Wallace was able to get in the way there and cause some trouble. Yeah, Havlin has forced a turnover there. A lot of the credit, I think, goes to Adonis Bailey. He's beating the screens that the Cardinals are setting there, and uh, if you can beat the screens effectively and still stay in front of your player, uh, you're, I mean, you're doing pretty good on, on the defensive end. Bailey with the ball right now. It's trying to make something happen. Gets it off to his man, Dwight Taylor. Basie on the inside, puts it up, misses, just rolled off the rim. Nice shot, just couldn't get it to go. Havelina still cold from the field here, haven't been able to knock down a shot in some time. Livingston for three. And Livingston makes it a three-point game here, and all of a sudden, it was once a ten-point lead by UIW, now down to three. See the Havelina can get back on track here on this offensive possession. We get down to Evans, and yeah. Evans. Havelina's haven't gotten a field goal in for six minutes so far. Wallace is the ball looking for somebody. Taylor puts it up, but they're going to call the shot off. And they're going to call a foul. It might have been a traveling call of some sort. I think, it, I think that's what it's going to be. Yeah, I think it is traveling. So Damon Warren check, uh, set to check back in for Mike Evans. Mike Evans just got few seconds there as Warren checks in. Have a little bit of count. Having to start off with a 12 point lead, now just down to three. Livingston puts it in, brings him within once. Livingston, last five points for UIW and has, had, has got his team back within one. Livingston, three or four right now with seven points, so uh, he's uh, coming into life for the Cardinals. Drive a shot there by Bailey, and they're going to call Bailey with the offensive foul, and nothing going with the Havelinas right now. Like I said, Havelinas can't even get the ball up. Like I've been saying, a lot of times they've been giving it up just off a turnover, uh, whether it be uh, you know an offensive foul or, or, or double dribble. But you know when you can't even get the shot off, it puts your team in a really bad spot. That's why the Cardinals are as close as they are right now. Yeah, so it's probably around the seven minute mark to have them to have a sunk a shot from the field. UIW making them pay here as they're within one. She has to take the lead here. Nice pass by Badillo to Hiddle. It's going to be Incarnate Word's first lead of the game. 19 18 with 540 left to go here in the game. Hiddle gave them their first lead here. Yeah, great move by Hiddle, too. Save will get it off the glass. Left alone by the Havelinas. Warren can try to back him down. Nice shot there, deep in the paint. And Havelinas back on top, 20 to 19. As the game starts to tense up here just a little bit. Damon Warren always improving his close play every game. You, uh, you, you gotta hope it, it keeps up. He's a great player with great size. Livingston put up and in, and Livingston playing uh, really well here in the last couple of minutes for Incarnate Word. Big part of the reason they now have the lead back. Yeah, he's been a big thorn in the Havelina side this half. He can uh, shoot the jump shot, and also he's been driving in just fine. Able to beat players off the dribble. Oh, nice pass from Marshall Bonds uh, down low to Warren. With the lineup that the Cardinals have, Damon <coughs> Warren has a huge advantage in the post. Looks like the Havelinas have been taking advantage of it as uh, their last four points have come off Warren. Yeah, I don't think Hiddle can compete with them down there. Livingston in the paint again. This time he's going to get the foul called. And it looks like they're going to... They're going to call it on Bonds the third there. They call the push. Yeah, it doesn't... Looks like he is going to go in free throws because uh, they are in the bonus now. Jamal Brown going to come in. <laughs> Livingston at the free throw line. Chance to tie the game here. Oh, and he misses that one. So uh, after the one and one, Havelina's grabbed the rebound. 
Four minutes, 20 seconds left here in the first half. Avelina's nursing a one point lead. Yeah, Avelina's caught a break there. They just took Damon Warren off the court, so they don't have that size advantage that they did. We'll see what they come up with, though. They still got five very legitimate scorers right now on the court. Macy high off the glass, and what a good shot by Rashad Macy. And, and that's definitely a shot that Bassey's been working on. He really does work, and uh, he's been able to hit it high off the glass like that plenty of times. Not working there for Mitchell Badillo, who... Oh, Jamal Brown. Nice job getting it off of the Kittle there. It flies through the air. You're able to grab a pass and make the save. Good, head, good heads up play there. Jamal Brown, very athletic gentleman there. And uh, able, first of all, to get his hands on that tough pass by Bassey uh, cutting in. Almost looked like he wanted maybe an alley oop. Uh, managed to get his hands on it anyways. Uh, saw he was going to jump out of bounds. Threw it right off of Hittle. And. Uh, when you have the basketball smarts like that, it, it kind of increases your chances just because you get more opportunities to take shots. And so we're just out of four minutes to go. Havelina is up three, 24, 221. Havelina is shooting 45% from the floor, nine of 20 from the field. Yeah, Havelina's with a one point lead, even though actually UIW is out shooting them right now. 10 of 19 from the field, 52%. So both teams are pretty good offensive performances thus far. Indeed, there's no doubt about that. Avalinas did have that really cold streak, though, on the offense for a little bit. Turned the ball over six times so far, as opposed to the Cardinals who have only turned the ball turned the ball over just three times. So Avalinas got to watch out for that turnovers. Uh, is what allowed UIW to get back into this game. Want to make sure not to cut corners and try to keep the ball with them. So on the floor, Rashad Basie, Adonis Bailey, Marshall Bonds the third, Jamal Brown, Dwight Taylor. Rounding out the top five there. Excuse me, the five on the court for the Havelinas. Brown, three over defender, misses. Valio able to chase it down. But this team down by three. Strong drive there by Brown, and he's gonna get the ball knocked out of his hands. Gonna be kind of weird ball still. Bassey could have tried to close in, try to get that offensive rebound, but he did a good job to drop back. Uh, this this is a team that can definitely score on you, especially in transition. No doubt. Going inside with Rucker. Rucker puts it up. Rebounded by Bonds. Oh, and I don't call. know. I don't yeah, know. That that's a traveling call that there. For real. Bonds falling down with the ball, and they're going to call him with the travel. And that. See, he fell with the ball, but the ball went out of his hands anyhow. Uh, it's not like he tried to get back up with the ball, and, and that's that's when usually the traveling should be called. Yeah, nobody here in this building likes that call. And nobody should. Nobody yeah, should. Yeah, it's no, an no. unjust call, but okay. got to let the refs run with it. Can't force us to follow that call. Can block their shine. I don't know. Big brother doesn't always know best. No, they don't. No, they don't. So 24-21 here. 303 left in the first half. I have a lean as there's some small lead. As you mentioned, just trying to recover that fast start magic they had. Oh, oh and Bailey able to intercept that ball. And one man to beat, and he puts it in. Nice move there. Jonas Bailey had one man to beat, and he beat him. Bailey took the court, uh, just sprinted from end to end there. Able to beat the defenders, get a good layup in. Bonds gets a piece of it as Livingston goes up. Taylor has it, thought about putting it up, gives it up to Brown, and Brown has to go off a leg of one of the defenders. They're going to call the foul. When the Havelinas get the type of energy that they have right now, uh, their hands get so active. They force a lot of steals so far. Uh, as, as Bailey just stole the ball there and then Bond stole it on the next possession. Gives the Havelinas four steals so far. Incarnate Ward hasn't even stolen it once. 
Yeah, so the Avalina's definitely forcing turnovers here, winning the winning in that department, but still five point game. Basie drives up, misses, corralled there by Corley, and it's coming back the other way. Five point game, two minutes and some change left. It's a shot half. that Bassett usually puts in. Uh, probably the splinter himself, but he didn't get it in on that one. And call the foul. Looks like this one's going to go on Marcel Bonds. This second, the, the eighth for the Javelinas this half. Yeah, Javelinas, uh, you know, uh, last time I talked to Coach Pete, he was he was saying his, his team is pretty aggressive. Um, regardless of if the fouls get called or not, you know, it depends on the refs. Um, but regardless, Coach Pete said he, he doesn't try to worry about the, about the calls that the refs make, just tries to keep the play as aggressive as possible uh, all the time. Livingston at the line. Denzel Livingston, 6'4", sophomore from Houston, Texas. It's a three-point game here, 26-23, two minutes left. Avelina's trying to push the lead here before the half. And they put Get into Warren. They put Warren back on the court. I was just about to say, uh, giving him the advantage once again in the post, uh, if, if they can try to utilize that advantage for these last two minutes in the half, uh, they could they could have a, they could be nursing a pretty healthy lead going into halftime. They're working on Warren here. Rucker puts it up, missing Bailey. Rebounds the ball and the Javelinas with a nice chance here to put some more points up. Yeah, Bailey shooting four or four, but not to mention he's got three rebounds too. He's been able to secure the boards tonight. Bailey all over the place here tonight. Got to get into Bonds down low. Taylor puts it on the ground, drives. Finds Basie from long range, misses, rebounded by Warren. Freshman clock here for the Havelinas, but Corley's there to intercept that pass. He's going to stop, pull up. And uh, a pull-up three is definitely one of the worst ideas. Uh, Bonds able to save it. Taylor drives, puts it up, and they're going to call the blocking foul there on Corley. Right call there. Taylor couldn't put the ball down, but he's going to go... Four, two free throws there. Going back to what I was saying, Corley went for the pull-up three-pointer. Uh, always a bad choice, especially when your team is trailing. Pull-up three is definitely not as energizing as uh, a dunk or, or a layup uh, in, in getting fast break points. Yeah, should have waited for his team to trail behind him and come up, but instead opted to take the shot and missed. And now the Havelinas here at the free throw line up five with 54 seconds to go in the half. Taylor puts that one in. Yeah, I got the lucky bounce there. Warren and Bonds are going to check out here as Jamal Brown's going to come in along with uh, Tomas Diaz, uh, his first his first action of the game. Taylor puts his team, oh, that one just uh, ruined out there at the end. Six point lead here, UIW. Trying to end the half on a high note. Kittle driving on Brown. Diaz and Great Brown are defense. there to, to meet him and Great outlet defense to Taylor. There. And smart, smart move by Dwight Taylor to wait for the rest of the team to come up. Uh, looks like the ball was moving around a lot there. Managed to slow it down. About a two second difference between the shot and game clock here. Havelina's gonna hold it and try to have one of the final saves here in the half. 29-23, Havelina's lead. 12 seconds on the clock. Basie with it and puts the move, gets in the lane, up, and just barely misses it. The ball comes off the rim. Basie did a good job to put it behind the back there. Just couldn't get the shot to fall for him. Uh, Brown and Hiddle had a shot at it there at the end of the half. We're trying to worry, but it's going to stay 29-23. Havelina's start hot. Finished a little cold, but you can the lead going into the half. Havelina should be proud of the six-point lead they have right now. Uh, we'll see you back in a few.
Still at halftime. Welcome back here. We're at halftime right now for the Javelinas. So far, Javelinas is just leading by six, 29 to 23. Uh, lots of offensive production so far coming from the Javelinas. Rashad Bassey so far having a little bit of a cold night going just three of 10. He's got six points, but the Javelinas being led by Adonis Bailey right now. Shooting is pretty high. He's four from four, not to mention two from two from behind the arc. He's got 10 points for him. On the Cardinals side though, they've also got some hot players on the offense. Denzel Livingston coming out strong, shooting four of five right now. He's got 11 points for the Cardinals. Uh, turnovers so far, Havelinas just have a few more right now. They've got eight as Cardinals only have five. UIW has been ma uh, managed to score six points off turnovers, um, which is more than the Havelinas four. Uh, both teams being tied so far with post presence inside of post uh, points in the paint. Both teams have tied for 14 points each. Um, Havelina's got four second chance points though and four fast break points. So that's the reason they have the six point lead. So with that being said, we'll see you back in the second half.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Kingsville Hampton in court, getting ready to start the second half of the Javelinas taking on the University of the Carnival Word Cardinals. The Javelinas got off to a really fast start there in the first half and uh, took a 29-23 lead into the half. Yeah, you know, they got off to a hot 12-point lead and uh, it cooled off there. UAW was able to get back into, you know, uh, their game and uh, able to cut this lead down to six going into halftime. Yeah, and uh, the Hogs are uh, coming out right here. Uh, turned out pretty quickly. The ball went out of bounds over to the UIW. So they're going to inbound the ball here. Havelina shooting 44.4% from the field. I'm not mentioned that already. Yeah, so far uh, they've been doing pretty well on the offense and uh, had, had had really strong defense earlier in the first half. It, it did kind of dwindle down a little bit. We also give UIW credit. They're definitely uh, just just a very good offensive team on their own. Yeah, after you Horton shot him up way short, it was defended though. So the Havelinas with Wallace Warren, uh, Bailey, Taylor, and Bassey on the floor. Starts the first half, the second half. Excuse me. Yeah, a little bit different. Uh, Coach Pete deciding to sit McNaugh and give Warren a little more time on the court. Yeah, and Taylor. Able to get his hand in there and cause a turnover, and Havelina's going to grab that one, take it back the other way. So far, Warren has been a little bit more productive than McMahon, at least in this game, off the post. Nice That's drive there by Lacey. So we'll see if uh, they'll go through Damon Warren a little bit more. He's been shooting three or four right now. He's got six points for the Hawks. Yeah, really a strong post presence for the Havelinas, and they want to slow it down. So they're going to be a place to go to. Got going a little bit more in the post when they went through that drought there. Dwight Taylor had a lot of hustle on that play. Uh, gonna call a foul on him. A really great job denying the pass and uh, would have saved it from out of bounds if, if that uh, foul wasn't called. So, Dale Brown gonna inbound here for UIW. Kittle drives into the paint, passes out to Horton. Horton drives, puts it up and in, goes under Warren. That's only Horton's second basket of the game, but uh, he's been getting some easy looks, and uh, it's kind of a player that the Havelinas uh, sort of forget when UIW starts moving the ball around a lot. Yeah, but the Havelinas controlling the paint very well, not making anything easy for these Cardinals. Bailey pulls up over Hiddle, makes a nice shot over the defender, had a hand up, but. Well, that's Bailey's fifth consecutive shot made. He's shooting five of five right now. Uh, see if he can end it out a perfect game. Yeah, hasn't missed. Corley tries to go around Warren, just comes up short. Rebounded by Horton, Horton. Unable to score, but there's gonna be a foul on the to the floor right now. Great hesitation move by Horton. He wasn't able to put the basket down, but uh, good hesitation, able to get a better look at the basket, even though it ended up getting rebounded uh, by Kyle uh, Hiddle. As he's gonna go up to the free throw line to shoot two. He's 0 of two so far though. So Hiddle uh, is that one in, but Taylor's gonna come off along with Bailey as Brown and Marshall Bond's third check in. Hiddle puts in the second one, so he's down to a six point game, 33 27. Here and the other going into the second half. Brown in the lane, up and can't finish there. Nice move to the basket, but Corley was there to rebound. And Rucker, nice moves uh, down on the baseline there, but put it up and in. Yeah, he was able to split between Bassey and Warren there. Get a finger roll in. That puts his team only down by four points. We'll see if the Havelinas can respond. The Havelinas have been getting good opportunities, Mark. They just haven't been finishing as much as they should. Warren deep in the post. Puts it in off the glass. Nice move there by Warren. 
They made my point. words as he finished there. <laughs> yeah, I guess it should be in Coach Pete's ear. Looks to know the team pretty well. Rucker driving, and another basket there by Rucker. And back-to-back -back baskets by him. Both done in a very good way. Uh, as he's been able to drive in, force, force the issue, and he's been able to get four quick points here. So if he wants to talk about it, he's going to take a time out here. And the Havelinas coming out pretty solid. Both teams coming out uh, well out of the out of the half. Havelinas uh, maintaining the four-point cushion here. But as you mentioned, Jonas Bailey just shooting lights out from the field and hasn't missed. Yeah, five of five so far from the night. Two of two from behind the arc and four rebounds for Adonis Bailey. He's got 12 points, leading scorer for the Javelinas right now. Um, you know, uh, being trailed right now by Rashad Bassey and Damon Warren, who both have eight points themselves. Damon Warren, uh, good job. He usually doesn't come off big for points, but uh, it looks like the Javelinas are really going to him this, uh, this go around instead. Okay. 16 minutes, 56 seconds left to go here in the game. Coach Street over there on the bench, uh, drawing something up here, trying to get his hogs back on track. Last time um, UIW came back first, took the lead. The Havarinas responded well. So we'll see if uh, the hogs here can put something together. Yeah, it's all about what energy level the Havarinas bring in. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, when they when they turn the ball over a little bit too often, you can tell all their rhythm gets messed up, whether it be on defense or offense. But uh, once they start knocking down their shots or, or making good plays, you can see that it, it kind of uh, transfers to every aspect of the game for them. Inside of 17 minutes. Wallace hesitates, thought about it. He's being patient. Basically drives. Wallace trying to get free. That's, that's a tough open. pass. Yeah, Livingston got a piece of it. And in the open court, has a man trailing. And that's uh, Lindale Brown. Able to pull the incarnate war with him, too. A good move by Livingston, choosing to pass instead. Gave a really easy basket. Yeah, Brown. Brown. Brown there trailing very well. Oh, and great move by the Hogs. Jamal Brown, hard to the hole, gets the roll. Nice shot by Brown. And that ball really hung up there on the rim for quite a while, didn't it? Yeah, it was uh, a little antsy there. And as uh, Bassey gets sent to the ground, looks like they're going to call a foul. As Bassey gets sent to the ground, the ball will get sent to the other end. It's going to be an offensive foul there. Yeah, they're going to call the foul on Horton. That's going to be his third, so. Yeah, a little bit of foul trouble maybe coming up for the Cardinals here. I got a couple of guys with three, I believe. Messi hard to the hole, puts, in, puts it in. The Havelinas taking back a six point lead here. They came out of the timeout just red hot. Horton shoots, puts it in. It's going to be a three pointer and back to a three point game. Horton keeping it close. Yeah, it's a good shot by Horton. It's a, it's a shot you definitely want to live with, though. Uh, he was closed out there pretty well by Damon Warren. Uh, he just knocked it down. Bassey stops, shoots, tries to go glass, misses. It's corralled there by Rucker. Oh, and great defense. And Brown in the open court by himself has one man trading behind him. Puts it up, and from behind, it's Brown fouling him, saving the two points. Yeah, Brown fouled our Jamal Brown there. He's going to go up to the line for two. The Brown on Brown foul there. 15 minutes. Great job by Jamal, though, just uh, reading the Cardinals' offense there pretty easy, just forcing that steal. Javelinas definitely do have one of the more tenacious defensive squads uh, in the LSC and the, and the in the nation. Yeah, some tenacious D. See what I did there? See what I did there? Not sure, you're gonna have to explain it to me after the game. <laughs> All right, in all honesty, yeah, yeah. Really good defensive squad. Uh, kind of him team coach Pete likes, you know, he likes an annoying defensive squad, and you know, they're doing just that. Not laying in kind word into the paint here tonight, uh, easily at least. Yes. Making it very frustrating on the perimeter. Yeah, and uh, offensively, uh, 
They have some players that they usually turn it on that uh, have come out a little bit cold. Uh, Rashad Bassett being one of them. You've seen a, a few opportunities where he's could have put down those shots, and he usually does. Uh, hasn't been able to score all of them in uh, this game. He's shooting 5 of 13, not too bad. They're going to come out of the timeout here. There's the towel people. And Players just taking the court again here. All right, and Brown's going uh, to come out of timeout at the free throw line, shooting. Yeah, both teams have been pretty, uh, have, have been playing with their post. Both teams right now have uh, had 22 points in the paint. So you can tell this game is very competitive, uh, e even on, on little things like that. Both teams have scored also eight points off turnovers. So really keeping up with each other here. Only four point lead. Not much to discern these two to the uh, these two squads right here. And Jamal Brown sinks both of them, gives this team a five point lead with fifteen minutes and some change to go here in the second half. Livingston working on Brown. Bonds trying to get a piece of that ball there. Very active hands there, uh, just not den denying the pass. Valeo gives it up to Hiddle, and Hiddle just can't finish there at the rim. I wasn't sure I saw a foul there, but uh, Bracey might have knocked Hiddle on the arm, perhaps. Uh, Foul's gonna go on Bracey. That's his second. It's gonna be the fourth foul on the Hogs, and Hiddle's gonna go to the line, shoot a couple. And he rims the first one off the front of the iron there. Yeah, it's a little flat. And you know, uh, an, an interesting aspect uh, to this game, both in the men's and women's game alike, is uh, they're going to face, they're, they're going to have a rematch just in three days. Yeah, so it's hard to beat a team twice, but it's hard to beat a team twice whenever you don't have much time to, to prepare for them. So whoever gets this uh, win is going to have a nice leg up, especially standing wise. Basically, goes into the paint and gets fouled. Uh, basically, got wrapped up there in uh, Livingston, it looked like. That actually goes on Hiddle, though. Labassi. Go to the line for a pair, trying to extend the lead, who stands at five right now. And the referee is uh, not quite sure what's going on in the court here right now, but. And they might be looking to discuss if it was in the act of shooting or not. It seemed pretty obviously in the act of shooting. Uh, but we'll see what the refs can come up with here. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell sometimes whenever all the scuffle is going on down there. But As we wait on the referees, remind everybody that you're watching the Havelina Broadcast Network. Catch everything live at www.tamu.edu slash live. Catch, all, catch us whenever there's a basketball game here at home. And yeah, not to mention also uh, we do try to cover uh, at least one baseball game a week uh, once baseball starts picking up. Yeah, softball as well, maybe so. Yeah, anything yeah. for Havelina Sports, we're the ones for you. Yeah, so just a... Uh, Keep on having the sports and keep checking back um, and see when we're going to be in in your ears, so to speak, or me and Paris. 
So, so far right now, 41-36 lead for the Javelinas. Just a slim five-point lead. It was as large as 12 uh, very early on in the game. Hasn't been that close ever since. As uh, UIW, uh, when you would be, be this close coming in, this wasn't a surprise to uh, anybody. And so, uh, so far, hopefully, uh, everybody getting their money's worth in, in this game. Yeah, no, exactly right. And Abilene to get this one, and you know, then you let get the next, get the next one against the Carnival Word. You know, be put them right in the, in the driver's seat at a seven-three mark. See what Midwestern State has to do, but you know, the Abilene is going to be in really, really good shape. The only difference is Abilene is going to be on their road for that rematch. We'll see if that adds a different aspect to the game for the Cardinals. Livingston drives, puts up and off the glass, and they're going to give him the and one call. 42 to 38. Nice drive there by Livingston. Yeah, foul one on Brown there. Uh, in those situations, I, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Brown didn't think the foul was going to be called, but it, it, if you're going to get into contact, you might as well try to deny the player the chance to score the shot. Uh, you'd never want to give up uh, an and one opportunity. Livingston puts his team within three after those free throws. 42 to 39, 14 minutes and some change left here in the game. Havelina's up by three on University of Incarnate Word. It was all important LSC game. Marshall Bond the third, strong move to the hole. Puts it up and in. There you go, Marshall Bond. Yeah, Getting added, going a, little added bit. a soft touch on that release there. Able to just uh, find its way in. Another and one play being given up by the Javelinas. Yeah, and they're going to call it on Bonds uh, on Hiddle. As, uh, looks like he did a good job staying with them, but the calls are almost all the time going to go to the smaller guy in, the, in that exchange there. It's Bonds' third foul as well. Javelinas right now have 16 fouls. The next one will put the Cardinals in the bonus. The one and one. The Hiddle trying to make it a three point game here with this free throw. Puts it up, makes them both. 44 42, two point game. Things getting interesting here at Kingsville Hampton in court. Havelina's nursing a small two point lead. Yeah, Havelina's going to have to be very careful on defense from now on, and they're going to definitely want to sink every shot they get. Want to blow any chances right here? Warren trying to get position, but UIW's defender just not letting him. And that's poked away by Rucker. First steal by the Cardinals. Another foul is going to be called here. It looks like it's going to go on Bracey. Now Brown tried to get down the court and put that one in. Looks like he had a small advantage, but Abilene was able to stop that one being laid in. He's going to send him to the free throw line with the chance to... Uh, with the chance to tie this game up. Brown puts in the first one. Bailey gonna come in for for Taylor. And Bassey's gonna come in for Brown. Both Bassey and Bailey have been uh, the answers, uh, at least on the offensive end for the Javelinas, uh, especially in this game. So Coach Pete putting him back on the, in, in hopes, as that is an embarrassing play by the Javelinas. Yeah, Livingston able to Got the rebound and the put back there, and now they have a Lena's shell by one after that. Three point exchange there. On that time up to court for Incarnate Word. Now the Havelinas have to put something in the basket here. They want to not see this game possibly get away from them. Remember back in the first half of that drought, lasted about over seven minutes. Oh, yeah. That's the stop. Pulls up, puts it in. Had a decent look at it. Bonds can't get to it. Falls on the floor. UIW Hardly. has numbers. Hiddle shoots for three. Puts it in. And all of a sudden, Incarnate Word has a four-point lead. Hiddle with that pull-up jumper in transition. Incarnate Word is pumped up right now. Can't say the, the same thing for the rest of the crowd here at 
Hampton Court. Yeah, Coach Pink took a time out of, at, at a good time. It looked like they were building up, especially a lot of momentum there with uh, Hill's pull up three. Um, so they're going to try to talk it over and hopefully get back into this game. Yeah, so the Havarinos letting the uh, UIW creep back in here, take a four point lead. Yeah, it's going to be important to see how the Havelinas can respond. This is uh, the largest lead the Cardinals have had. Uh, before this, the largest lead was only one. Um, so now it's a two-possession game. Obviously, still plenty of time left on the clock, over 12 minutes. So Havelinas still got plenty of time to respond. We'll just see if uh, they have the willpower to do it. Yeah, so 12 and a half left. Here go, Havelina's trailing by four now. Bracey bringing it up the, up the court. Bailey had a good idea there. Stay there by Warren. It's gonna reset here, only 12 seconds on the shot clock. Bracey gives it to Wallace, straight ahead three. Wallace misses off the back iron, rebound by Badillo. Badillo. Takes it strong, throws it out to Livingston, who's alone in the, on the shoulder. Warren did a good job of securing the rebound, but the Havelinas throw it away here. Wasting a the possession there. Now they time out on the floor there. Yeah, good look there by Wallace. He's unable to knock it down. Seems to be his type of shot. Straight away, uncontested three, but. Unable to knock that one down. Yeah, just a little strong off the iron there. Hopefully he doesn't uh, take away from his confidence to, to give it another try if he gets another open shot. I like that one. Fans getting all these little prizes from Shirley's and showing no love for the commentators up here. That was one of, one of those little orange balls. Now there's a, it's curse to being part of the media there. You don't get all the cool swag sometimes. But some I get, some other people I get. But then again, I guess kids call it swag if we all don't get it. Swag, stuff we all got. 11.43 to go as the players take the court again. So we'll see how the Javelinas have responded. I, after that, that last time out that Coach Pete had called, they uh, couldn't add any points on the board. Hiddle drives to the basket and misses, but he's been hot and is confident driving to the basket so far. And Bailey throws it down. John is Bailey just in the open court, one-handed jam. The only reason I haven't talked yet is because that, that dunk yeah. left me speechless. It just was. putting an exclamation point on trying to get this comeback going for well, the Avalinas. Well, that's why you got to get back on defense. Bailey just had nobody covering him, had a straight. Oh, yeah. The Cardinals Great looked lazy there. Bailey uh, passed up the player that was guarding him, and then it was just open air for him, making the best of his opportunity. Bailey's an athletic player. He uh, he can uh, drop the ball down like that all the time. Yeah, he's got some he's got some ups. Havelina's only trailing by two. We'll see if this free throw changes it. Now Rucker standing the, the small but. But you know, it's a lead nonetheless for UIW. Leads by three here, 11 minutes exactly to go here in the game. Missed that one off the front. Still a three point game, but. Bassey did a good job to let it go out of bounds there after. Uh, yeah, Brown looked like he almost had that one. Yeah, Havilland is lucky they didn't lose it there. Warren backing down Rutgers, but he gets a double team and he's going to get fouled there. Livingston came over to help and they're going to call Rutgers. 
Damon Warren making good of almost every opportunity that comes his way. Shooting so five of six now with that shot. Gonna go to the free throw line here and uh, try to tie this game up at 49 apiece. Puts the game on back on an even keel here at 49 points. So Damon Warren coming up big for the Javelinas, one of the, the more efficient bench players of this game. Now he's going to have a seat here and give away to Marshall Bond's third. We just checked in for him. Oh, a nice pass from Livingston to Rutgers who was cutting. Brown was on him, but he just had to step on Brown and it was just enough for him to get to the basket. Yeah, he just found enough room to kind of just get that shot off the backboard. 51-49, UIW leads. Bailey stops, pulls up, nails it. Long two-pointer, Bailey. Bailey is now seven possessed. of seven from the field. He just cannot miss, turns around, and shook his head the other way on his way back up the court. Rutgers strong to the hole, puts it in. Havelina is st starting to exchange baskets. And there's Brown, steals it away on the inbound pass, waiting for his team to get back. But Leo puts a move, tries to get the pass off, but he turns it over. Bailey passes it back to Brown. Brown puts it in, ties the game, 53 all. And see, Havlin has done a good job. They lost that ball early on that inbounds, but you know what, they got right back to defense. Wallace picked up the steal, uh, and they didn't mope about it. And that's really good, especially when the game is so close. It's important not to lose your composure. Nice pass from Dio to Hiddle. He can't finish. Rebound Havelinas and the Havelinas are cleaning it a little bit. Yeah, Hiddle had just forgotten where the rim was on that turnaround. You can tell just with that, with that poor shot. Lacey up top uh, controlling traffic here. Drives, gets into the paint, puts it up, and he's fouled. Looks like they're going to call that one on Rutgers. We had one just a minute ago. Good thing with Rashad Bassey is uh, when you when he drives in, you almost expect either for him to put it in or to draw the foul, and either is dangerous uh, for the Cardinals. Bassey trying to put his team back out in front again at the charity stripe to shoot a pair. That's going to be the fifth foul on UIW this half. Avelinas have eight on their side as Bassey puts them up by one, 54-53 with that. Bassey was one of two from the charity stripe before this free throw. Knocks that one down, makes him two of three from hit, the free throw line. Hit on by the other, gonna check out. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss <laughs> Corlea checks in with uh, Ian Markoff. For UIW, inside of nine minutes to go. Havelinas have at least retaking the lead, found themselves in a little bit of a comfortable spot, hopefully. He's going to set up for a wild finish here. Rutgers drives on Vaughn, shoots over, gets the glass. 55 all here. That's good defense by Bonds. Looks like another little orange ball made that's <laughs> found its way onto the court. Got to keep the got to keep the refs court clear, man. They don't take no nonsense. We're throwing little orange balls onto the floor. You're not going to throw them up here to the, the commentators. You're not going to throw them on the floor. That's exactly the ref's viewpoint on it. Yeah. Brown, basically gets out of the base in the corner, shoots off the front of the rim, and it looks like it's going to be out on the Havelinas there. You had Bailey and Wallace trying to contend for it, but couldn't really tell from this angle, but they're going to give the ball. It looks like they're going to give a foul to... UIW is going to send uh, looks like it's going to send Brown to the line there. They're going to call the foul on Bailey. That's going to be his fourth. So yeah, that's a problem. Bailey is uh, definitely the hottest shooter right now for the Havelinas. Him picking up four fouls. Uh, yeah, so Bailey's going to sit down. He's going to he's going to sit a little while. I wouldn't imagine him uh, sitting for any less than four to five minutes. Have him out there for the home stretch of the game. Brown misses the first one on the 1-1, one one. so. Looked like Orrin had gotten a piece of Warren's arm there. I'm surprised they didn't call a loose ball foul, but looks like they saw the ball go out, go out of bounds anyhow. Just gave it to the Havelinas. Bonds, Basse, Warren, uh, Diaz, 
and Brown on the court for the Javelinas. They get it into Warren. Warren decides to back it down, puts it up, and just misses. Doesn't get the balance, but he's going to go to the line for two more. You could hear everyone in the audience gasp there. And uh, Warren understands that he has the advantage, and you can tell every time he gets the ball, he doesn't even look to pass it anymore. He looks to, to uh, make a move on the post and put it in. And that's what he's been doing. He's been very successful on it so far on the, on the night. Five of six shooting. He's got 11 points for the Javelinas. Warren nails the first one. Javelinas lead 56, 55 now. Just over eight minutes to go, 8-11 here. Yeah, still eight minutes, plenty of time. Uh, the game's real close now, though. Uh, we'll see if it, if, if it stays that way. For Warren, the Warren gives his team a one-bucket lead here. And Javelinas usually aren't a very good free throw shooting team. Uh, it's definitely important that they uh, knock every opportunity they get, though. And Brown intercepts Rutgers' pass. Three on one. Brown up and in. Good job by Brown to get, get the fast break. I think that was Brown's third fast break opportunity that he's created himself there. Yeah, Brown, uh, magnetic hands there. The ball just gravitates to him. 59-55, Javelinas. 6-0 mini run here. Oh, and a nice drive there by Corley. He puts it in the basket. 57-59. The clock's starting to run a little bit faster, it would appear, as the game tightens up here. Pacey will be worked on by Brown. He's going to drive and throw it back out. Bond. Diaz in the corner. Diaz lets it fly. Misses. Comes up short. It looked off since when he let it go, but... And Diaz is, isn't too bad of a shooter. He doesn't get that much playing time. and doesn't put up too many points. Basie just had one man to beat there, and Warren able to get the rebound. Looks like they're going to call a loose ball foul right after that. And he just put on the guns and uh, outran Livingston there, basically. Just not enough. Livingston still able to get a piece of it. He's going to put the Javelinas in the bonus as well here. And they're going to shoot the one and one shots here. One more Havelina foul, and uh, UIW is going to be in the full in the double bonus there. Free throws the rest of the way. Yeah, so right now 6:54 left in the game. Havelina's with the slim two-point lead. Mark, it's been close pretty much all night. Yeah, indeed, it indeed has. Uh, the Havelina's, like we said, jumped out to that big lead, but every, but UIW uh, got back in the game and able to take a you know really slim leads here, but the Havelina's battled back. Here, so any unanswered questions you might have had about the Javelinas, you really got to give it to them here. I mean, they didn't give up, they didn't get a big lead, and then, you know, uh, uh, some teams who might be pretending to lose those leads and they'll get them back, but the Javelinas playing yeah. tough here, you know, showing that they're for real and they can play some clutch basketball, and they're really executing well right now down the stretch. You know, uh, they definitely have a lot of room to improve, and, uh, you know, there's still a long ways away for them uh, just, you know, in terms of time, there's a, a lot of the season left to play out. But I think there's no question that the Javelinas are definitely a, a legitimate team here and a legitimate contender uh, for a good playoff run. Yeah, no doubt here. And uh, I think they show it. I, I think you can see in the fact that even when they were trailing and that the momentum was with the Cardinals, I mean, they're not giving up on the plays. Uh, they're not putting their heads down. Just trying to get back quick on every ball. So we're inside of seven minutes to go, 6.54. Havelina is trying to improve to 6-3 and three and uh, grab a piece of the second place pie in the Lone Star Conference. But yeah. a lot of basketball to be played still with only two game cushion between uh, first and first and fourth place really. Havelina's win here will be basically Depending on what happens elsewhere, it's going to be a three-way tie. Brown stops, pulls up, shoots, puts it in. Tie game here, 6.40 to go, 59 all. You can tell there was a miscommunication on the defense. Once Brown ran off that screen, nobody uh, was covering him. Nobody knew who should cover him. And uh, he was left open there. He saw the room and pulled up for the jump shot. Good move by him. 
Balls out to Bassey, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Reset, Warren, the screen. Oh. Warren puts it in on the putback. Bassey served it up for him, and there goes Warren. When you have a player like Damon Warren there to eat up all the boards and to, to have a few putback baskets, it's definitely a luxury for the Javelinas. Good job by him setting the, the pick up high and then following the basket. Really good job there. That's really a good fundamental ball there. Ball going in and out gives the Javelinas. Uh, the Javelinas still have the two-point lead. They might be able to cushion it here, and that's something that they're definitely going to want to do as time is winding down. They try to get it in the Warren there, but Diaz catches it right before it goes to the hands of a UIW player, and it's going to reset. Here we go. Ten seconds left on the clock. Bassey working on Brown. They try to give him the step. Stops. Pulls up and in. Clutch shot there by Bassey. Javelinas lead by four. Shot Bassey right now, only shooting six of 16. I know that doesn't sound so good, but uh, he's still a player you can trust, especially in the clutch time moments. Livingston, not shy of the lights either. Puts his team within one with the three. And Livingston attaining the Havelina side here tonight, causing some trouble for these hogs. Keeping his team in it. Bonds, long two, puts it up and in. Marshall Bonds. Shot Bassey had the defense pulled there. He didn't even look at Bonds when he gave him the bounce pass. And Bonds making the best of an of, of an almost a, a shot almost out of the range he usually likes to shoot it. Yeah, if you're a big guy, you gotta make those. And when you're making them, you're gonna have a really good night. And he's made a couple of long ones here tonight. And uh, that's what Bonds is best at, you know, that mid-range shooting. Uh, he's been doing well so far tonight. Now, so Bonds looking a little bit upset there. Diaz is going to go to the bench along with uh, Brown, Bracey, and Bailey are going to come back in. Bailey playing with four fouls right now, four, and four minutes, 45 seconds to go here. Let's see if uh, UIW tries to attack Bailey. Inbound here to Rutgers, oh. and Bonds rejects it, but Rutgers able to get it yeah, back Rutgers and put it in. Able to get the ball back. Great job by him putting it in. Uh, Bonds has had a pretty quiet night, but he actually is shooting three of three so far, so he has been making good of the opportunities he has been getting. Basie working on Brown. Basie drives, trying to d uh, dump it off to Warren here, but he gets the ball, gets it back, up it in. Warren almost got the, the board, but throws it right back to Brown, and Brown in the open court. Nice pass to Livingston, but rejected there by Bailey. And the back pass is good, but the Cardinals weren't able to score. And... Uh, Coach Pete's a little bit lucky that they're calling the foul on Dytrell Bracey instead of Bailey. That would have been his fifth. Yeah, a really big break there. As a, then again, that would have ended Bailey's night with the perfect, uh, with the perfect record, I believe, right? The shooting. But Livingston misses that one, and we're going to stay at a one-point game here. So just to keep it interesting, Livingston missed the first shot. Got a couple of substitutions. Racy's going to come out along with Bonds. Taylor, Wallace, Bailey, Warren, and Basie on the court right now for the Havelinas. It looks like this might be the squad. Barring any foul trouble that Coach Beats is going to want to stick with right now. Yeah, right back at 65. Bailey in the corner. Hasn't missed yet and still has it. Bailey. Clutch shot, puts him up by three. Adonis Bailey, what can you say about him tonight? What can't you say about Adonis Bailey? Well, I was going for more for, uh, you know, unspeakable, or I'm less speechless, but you know, yeah, we, yours works too. Livingston answers back in the Javelinas and Cardinals right now, trading shots. Just heavy just like hitting teams right now, just trading baskets and Adds way more momentum, uh, adds a lot more tension to the game and a lot more buildup to the end here. I love rivalry games. Bassey gets in deep to the paint, pivots out. Bailey on the dribble, finds Taylor. And Bailey's gonna, re, uh, it's gonna reset here with 10 seconds on the clock. Bassey asks for it, working on Brown. Bassey into the lane, passes to Bailey. Bailey shoots, Bailey scores! Adonis Bailey. My God, what a night for him. Donis Bailey goes nine of nine. He's got 22 points right here for the Javelinas. You can't ask for a more efficient performance from a player, Mark. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Bailey right now, just shooting lights out. 
so confident with the shot. Looked good the whole way once he let it go. Definitely a player I would want on my fantasy team right now. Three minutes, six seconds, 71, 68. Donis Bailey putting the Javelinas up on top of it. A lot of basketball to be played right now. Three minutes and some change here at Kingsville Hampton in court, and we are seeing a really, really good game here. Lots of, uh, lots of performances uh, that should be mentioned on the offense for the Javelinas. Uh, Damon Warren going six of seven. Jamal Brown forcing two steals going three of six. And uh, of course, Rashad Bassey, who has 15 points for the Javelinas too. The problem isn't so much the uh, offense for the Javelinas. They really need to clamp down on the defense because the Cardinals, if you give them any room, they'll knock down the shot as, as they've been uh, doing so far in the second half. Yeah, now the Javelinas in their place defense, as I mentioned, Livingston, just a thorn in the Javelina side as the answered back. But uh, after that timeout, on maybe the Javelinas come out and really focus on him, but he's really, he's been the, the the cancel out man on the other side for UIW as much as the Javelinas are celebrating on this side. He's been the, yeah, he's been the spark plug over there on that, on that Livingston side. Livingston is uh, actually the leading scorer in the entire game with 23 points. He's going eight, eight of 10. Uh, the important thing is the Javelinas do want to shut him down, but they got to understand too, uh, you don't want to leave any of the other Cardinal players open either. Something you're going to have to try to, uh, Livingston's a person you're going to have to try to guard on your own. Yeah, you can't lose him on those switches right there. He's able to back cut. Brown there, and Hiddle passes down to Rutgers, and it's rejected. Livingston grabs the rebound here, and they're going to reset. By Michelle Bonds. The ball's out of bounds to the Javelinas. Marshall Bonds, two blocks here on the night, I believe. So that's going to take us to another media timeout. Under three minutes in the game here, so time winding down. Game is getting... <laughs> Certainly much more exciting as the Javelinas have the slim three-point lead here. But you know what, Mark? I was saying they needed to clamp down on the defense, and, and they definitely did on that last uh, possession for the Cardinals. We have an expression for times like that there. So what is it? You know, just throw well, it back in, the, in their face a little bit. We'll see what had happened there as uh, the finger roll went up in the air. Marshall Bonds went up there, took a good look at the ball, <laughs> and you know what? Inspected and rejected there. Marshall <laughs> Bonds, the third. Great game for him. He's three or three from the night. He's got six points, six rebounds, and I believe two blocks. They're waiting the whole night to hear it. Actually, hasn't said it. I told him I'd leave the mic if, uh, if he said it, but you know. I know he's been itching to say it the whole night, and you know. Oh, you know I was looking for it there, man. It's the perfect opportunity, perfect opportunity to say that line, and, and, and I'm glad that the opportunity presented itself. <laughs> With two minutes, 40 seconds to go, as we said, it's an eternity in basketball. 71-68. Reminder, UIW is going to be shooting uh, free throws from here on out. So. Both teams, this is very interesting, both teams are shooting over 50% from the field. Uh, that's when you know it's definitely uh, a shootout to yeah. the top. Incarnate Word, 5 of 10 from beyond the arc. Havelina's 4 of 11. So very close in a lot of ways here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, both teams very, very even. Brown drives, and they're going to call the travel on him. It's going to go back the other way. It's a tough break for the Javelinas. Gives the Cardinals a chance to get back into this game. Uh, this is uh, the point where every basket starts to really, really matter. So we'll see if the Javelinas can uh, come up with a performance on the defensive end like their last one. Valio with the ball right now, trying to make something happen. Brown being worked on by Bassey. We're inside of two minutes to go here. UIW down by three. Here's Livingston, working on Taylor, passes out to Valio, Valio drives, try to get inside the Rucker, and it's going to be out of bounds on the Javelinas. How about the active hands of Jamal Brown again? Almost picked up his third steal of the game. Pretty disappointed that he uh, probably didn't get the handle on the ball. So Cardinals have a chance to still tie this game on this possession here, or at least get within one point. But only seven seconds left on the shot clock. Coach Pete's definitely going to want to tell his team to lock it down in these last uh, last few seconds on the shot clock for the Cardinals. Yeah, so defensively, I mean, you have a guy like Livingston who's shooting the lights out, but 
you know, the Cardinal passes, even though they've been off uh, off the mark a lot tonight, you know, they get in there. They sure do. Times like this, I wish the camera was on us more. There's. Just to show you uh, how close this game has been, both teams, like I said, have scored, uh, both teams have scored 36 points in the paint. They're staying pretty competitive uh, in that in, the, in that range. They get it in the Rutgers, and Rutgers able to muscle it over two defenders, and the Javelinas come up with a good, clean stop here. Got it over two defenders, but couldn't get it through the front of the uh, rim there. Bailey thought about shooting it, but he didn't. The perfect man here on the night, nine for nine, Bailey. Sometimes you gotta wonder if, uh, you know, you're a little scared to give up that, that the perfect shooting percentage. Or you gotta wonder if he even notices. Taylor gives it to Bonds underneath Bonds. Up under, Bank cannot finish. It's still a three-point game, a minute 14 to go. Leo gets into the paint, passes it back out. Livingston long three and puts it in. There's Livingston once again for UIW, tying the game up. And what do we say about that man, Livingston? Livingston's double one is just double trouble right there for the man to win. watch out for. We should just put uh, we should just put both 11s out there and let them uh, settle there right now. That's what we should do for the last minute. That's true. Both number 11s coming out big for their respective team. Gives Livingston his 26th point, shooting nine of 11. Very good performance by Livingston as well. And uh, he might be looking to spoil the pack, the house night for the Havelinas here. Yeah, and uh, it's well uh, down his daily uh, night all together. Just great night for Bailey, but unable to shake Livingston on the other side. Who's a, who was a, as a wise man once said, you know, just blocking Bailey Shine here tonight with, with the, his play on the other end. Yeah, hopefully Bailey Shine doesn't get blocked for too long here. We'll see if the Havilians can retake the lead. Bassey has the ball inside of a minute to go. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Bassey directing traffic. Wallace tries to go inside of Warren. Boss tapped out. Hiddle comes up with it. 41 seconds to go. If 71 all. If defense is, has ever mattered, it's going to be on this possession here that's going to come up after this timeout. So the Javelinas uh, can probably ensure themselves the final shot of the of the game here with uh, there being 36 seconds left. So depending on how long your IW takes, the shot clock will be turned off for the Havelina's final possession. But yeah, the Cardinals have about a nine second uh, difference from the game clock. But uh, the Havelinas are definitely going to want to try to force the ball out of the Cardinals' hands as soon as possible. Uh, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't want Livingston to get the ball. I mean. He's been shooting lights out uh, here in the second half. You want a guy to not get the ball. That's going to be the guy you're going to key in on. But like I say, you don't want to give up another easy basket to this UIW team. Yeah, and 36.6 seconds left. The pressure is really kicking in. We'll see how the Havilians can respond. It's one of the situations uh, they definitely want to find themselves good at, especially if they want to make a run of the playoffs. That's where the competitiveness uh, jumps up just a whole other level. Yeah, so 36.6 seconds to go. UIW in possession. Going to take the ball out right by their own, in front of their own bench here, in front of the scores table. So seven fouls for the for UIW. Have Lena's in the one and one right now. Double bonus over for UIW. So they're going to be shooting free throws regardless. Both teams will. Yeah, another thing that Havelinas have to do is try to be sure not to foul. That's uh, definitely something they don't want to give up. Uh, two, you know, two shots from the charity stripe. And, it, and Bailey's got to be careful here. He has the five fouls, and he's definitely, uh, there needs to be a final shot, which there probably will be. He'll be the guy that they're going to want to go to. So nine seconds left on the clock. Video hands out to Brown. Brown's going to drive, put it up. And Brown puts it in, 13.3 seconds to go. Havelinas will have the final shot here. Bassey gets the ball in. Yeah, he's going to have to run the ball down. Just 10 seconds left here. Bassey driving all the way down. That's a tough and shot. Bassey off the iron and misses. And 
4.2 seconds left on the clock. They, Bailey is forced to foul here. And Bassey tries to drive, but it comes up just short. Shot look good. But it comes off just off the iron, so Javelin is going to need a hope for a, at least one miss here. Yeah. Tell the, the, the heart of the crowd broke a little bit there. Bassey's shot didn't go in. My heart broke a little bit there when Bassey's shot didn't go in. A uh, really, really tough way for this game to unfold, but Havelina's had their chances, but you got to give Livingston his his props. Every time the Havelina's looked to put a small dagger in, he just answered right back. Havelina's had no answer for him, just like UIW had no answer for Bailey. You know, both teams shooting well, and sometimes it just depends on the team that shoots better. <laughs> and, you know, Mark, like I was saying, this game, just even close in the stat sheet, both teams so far have, uh, UIW took 56 shots this game. Kingsville took 55. Brown nails the first one. Still a three-point game. Next uh, shot, the all-important one for the Javelinas. Here, Brown needs to sink this one to pretty much ensure a win. If he misses, Havelina still have a shot. So another timeout going to be called here. You know, on both teams really shot the ball well tonight. 50, at least 50% on each side of the ball. So, I mean, it's going to be... No, I already... The big free throw coming up for for Brown here from UIW side. 4.2 seconds on the clock. Havelina is trailing by three. And this uh, will be pretty much it if Brown sinks this free throw. And oh, and it rims in and out. And there's and a they timeout. Do call the timeout. 3.8 seconds left. It's going to be a tough shot to draw up. See if they do. It doesn't even look like Coach Pete wants a timeout, but Damon Warren called it. So they're going to have to go the length of the court, it seems, here. Tough break for Havelinas. Yeah, they have three point seconds to try to get the ball all the way across the court. What a pass by Reed Wallace. And that's going to be a foul on number four. It should be. And it looks like it is going to be a foul on. So Warren's going to go to the line. So, so what do you do here? Do you hope to make both of them? Make one, miss the second one, and hope to get the rebound? You know, th this is a tough thing, and, and you can tell what the Havlings are preparing for. As Bonds comes in, he's the, uh, one of the lankier players. If... In this situation, I think it'd be best to try to sink the first one and try to get a put back in on the second one. Because even if you sink the second one, your team's still down by one, you'd have to foul again. There's no guarantee. Now yeah, it's such little time left on the clock. The Havelinas pretty much are going to need this put back. But we'll but see Warren what needs to make this one. Oh, and it's going to come off the rim. There was one and one, but that's going to be the game here and the Havelinas are going to fall in a close one 74 to 71 a really really tough game for the Havelinas down is Bailey great game but Livingston just a little bit better tonight not shot not percentage wise but he put the he put them over and he was able to put his team in a good position to win here so yeah Denzel Livingston give the man the credit 9 of 11 from the field 4 of 5 from behind the arc he got 26 points he helped his team take well, this win and uh, we'll be back here for a couple of interviews uh, 
I'm going to be, the game here, I'm gonna be talking to Coach Pete and Adonis Bailey as uh, soon as they find their way up here and uh, talk to them, get, get, uh, you know, get their perspective on the game and see what their mindset is going to Incarnate Word this next game. Yeah, just a great game by the Javelinos. Uh, they came out strong and they were playing clutch there down the line, but uh, Incarnate Word made uh, just one, just a couple more plays than they did. And that was ultimately the difference uh, here tonight. Yeah, so just stay tuned, and we got a couple post-game interviews coming up. Uh, we're here at the Kingsville Hampton in court coming off that really heartbreaking loss. Uh, Coach Pete, first of all, just what are your initial reactions uh, coming in off of that game? Well, we played outstanding defense the first half like we've been doing all year long. and and um, But we just had a couple opportunities to score in the first half, and we didn't get that done. We need a little bit bigger lead. And um, second half, we know we're going to come at us. They're leading scoring team in the conference, and they got they got numerous threats out there, as, we, as you saw in the second half. Numerous guys can make plays. And, a couple of guys that hadn't been doing it for him did it for him today. I thought we did a pretty good job in a couple of their big scores, but um, we let a few of them get away there late. And when it's down right down to the end, you just got to make a couple plays. They made a couple and we didn't. Yeah, Denzel uh, Livingston, a big player right now uh, for the Cardinals. He came off for 26 points, uh, 9 of 11 from the field, I think 4 of 5 from the three point line. Uh, so is it going to be hard to, to try to contain a player like that, uh, at least, I mean, with your rematch coming up in a few days? Well, if you look at it, you know, he's, he's made 13 threes on, on the season. and. And so today he's got four, so he made it as, as yeah. third as many as he's made all year long. So you, ha you have to take away something. And he's uh, uh, he's been doing that for him for a while. You know, he's kind of a big big game player and, and really stepped up because uh, we're just trying to shut down Rucker, obviously, and, and a few of the other guys. And so, but we knew he's definitely capable of that, and, and he hit a couple big ones. But, um, you know, young, young people are pretty resilient when he really gets down to it. And we got to bounce back tomorrow. We don't have time to cry about this and worry about it. It's no different whether you win or not. You got to come out tomorrow and get ready for practice and coaching staff will break down this film and we'll try to uh, try to eliminate some of the mistakes that we made and then um, going up there for a big one on Saturday. Yeah, you guys do got the rematch on Saturday. Are you proud of your teams? Uh, for the most part, they, they were pretty efficient on offense. Uh, Marshawn, uh, Marshawn Bonds went three for three. Damon Warren had a big night for you guys. And of course, uh, Adonis Bailey went nine and nine, perfect uh, from the field. So are, are, are you proud of uh, what your team showed here today uh, other than uh, the end? Yeah, and we, it was unusual. You know, Adam Umla went, went in, all of a sudden he, he just felt a little dizzy. He saw that free throw that he shot, and he's fifth in the conference in free throw percentage. And all of a sudden he just he just got dizzy. We don't know if he's just got sick or something. Uh, something hit him. Maybe got a shot to the head that we don't know about. We need to check and find out. So just not having him, you know, he was in a big part of our game plan. So I was I was proud of Damon to step up. And obviously Adonis, maybe I should have the ball in his hands at the, at the end. And um, but uh, I'm gonna go with you know Rashad's been doing it for us all year long. And, and right now I'm, I'm gonna stay with Rashad and I believe in him. And and uh, I, I know he's gonna make plays next time. What's the mindset going into this weekend, trying to get the upset over there in San Antonio? Yeah, we don't call an upset in the conference. I don't care where anybody's at in the standings. We think that everybody's pretty even as far as talent goes, and that, that's it. Uh, I don't pay a lot of attention to the standings, and um, I just know it's going to be another it's another battle. You know, I used to work up there for 11 years, so it's a little, a little special for me going back to San Antonio. And well, a lot of family and friends there, and a lot of supporters for us as well. So it's, all, it's always good when we go to San Antonio. We always enjoy that. All right, and as always, I'll, re I'll reserve uh, these last few seconds for you to shout out to your family. Dad, how you doing, Brother Tim? Appreciate it. All right, and that was uh, Coach Pete Peterson. Thank you so much, Coach. And uh, 
looks like that is about it for us here from the Hampton and Court. I'm Ferris Sabawi. I'll see you guys later. Have a great evening.